Welcome to this first tutorial for Advanced Builder, the Unity 3D tool available on the Asset Store. In this tutorial, I'll show you step by step the different parts of the tool. Advanced Builder helps you easily build multiple versions of your game on multiple platforms. The tool has four big sections. The first one is Product Parameters. In this section, you'll define the pedal version of your product. So instead of going in Edit, Project Settings, Layer, and other settings, and specify here the bundle version of your game, you'll simply have to set it here in Project Parameters in Advanced Builder. The second section is Release Types, and here you'll define all the different versions of your game. For example, if you want a demo and full version of your game, uh, using Unity, you'll have to go to Edit, Project Settings, Player, and change the project name here to My Game Demo, for example. The bundle identifier, become My Game Demo, and build the demo version of your game here. Then, after the build is done, you'll go back to Player Settings, change the name of your game to My Game. Change the package name to only com.mygame and build once again. You'll also want to do different things based on the version of your game. So you'll have something like a static class with a boolean to define if the build you made is a demo or not. So for example, you'll have a product version script with a static bool is demo version which is set to true and you have to change it before each build to make sure that the boolean is set correctly depending on you making a demo or a full version of your game. And of course you will have to be careful to do that every time you create builds for your game. Well, using Advanced Builder you just have to specify all the release types version you want and we will build them one after another with all the correct parameters. The only thing you have to do is click on the Add Release Type button, specify your first release type, which is the demo version, specify the bundle identifier, the product name, add a second release type, and done. When you click on Build, it will build the two versions of your game automatically. Okay, then we have the Platforms sections. Here you just define all the platforms you want to support. You can even define which texture compression you want to use for Android. Or the architecture for Windows, Mac or Linux. Then you have the Advanced Settings section. Here you can choose a build folder path. By default, every build will be created using the current path here. So you'll have a folder containing the build date. Inside you have another folder with the release type, another folder with the platform, and another folder with the architecture, if the architecture is available. This helps you keep a clean architecture of your builds so, for example, here I've made a demo and full version of a game on three different platforms, and you can see here the build the date folder, uh, the demo and full folder, and in each of these folders there's the platform, and for Mac we have also the architecture here. So, if you have multiple architectures, you have multiple folders here and everything is well organized. You can also define your own custom build scripts that I'll detail later in this video and choose also some build options you want for your builds. And the final section, which is the perform build sections, here you see a summary of everything you've selected. So we can see that six builds will be created on three different platforms. And you can also check the package name and the build uh, destination folder. If there's an issue with your configuration, Advanced Builder will tell it to you in the warning error section at the bottom. 
For example, let's say I remove all the platforms I want to support. You'll see an error here telling you you have to choose at least one platform and you can't build anything. Okay, so now let's try a real example. We'll only select the Mac platform. So let's say I want my product to have a demo in full version. I have a scene with a cube and two buttons. One is to change the color of the cube. The other to change its scale. Now, I don't want to load the demo version to change the scale of the cube. So what I first do when my configuration is complete is press the Generate App Parameters button. This will automatically modify for me the App Parameter script here and create an enum with the different release type I've created with also some other parameters. You'll see at the bottom that you have some public statics parameters that you can access during runtime. Now I can go on the script that controls the scale of my cube and in the update cube scale method I'll just add if the current release type is equal to demo I will log an error telling the user that we can change the scale of the cube in the demo version of the app and return. Now we go back to Unity, make sure everything compiles and when it's done just press the build button. After a few seconds or minutes depending on the size of your project you will have all your builds inside the build folder here so, for example, if I launch the full version of the game, I can switch color and I can switch scale. Now, let's try the demo version. I can switch color, but scale does not work. Okay. That was a simple example, so let's try something a little more advanced. Okay, now let's say you want to follow the evolution of your product. You need three different versions of your game. For example, the development version, a beta version, and a release version. The development version is the one developers of the game are going to use every day to test if things are working correctly. Beta versions are versions you'll send to some people, and release versions are versions you're going to publish. So, for example, in the dev and beta version of your game, you'll want to activate the logs, but not in the release version. Imagine your game is using Facebook Connect, and you don't want to mess up with the release app you have on Facebook. Well, you'll have to specify a different Facebook ID for the dev, the beta, and the release version of your game. Or let's say your game is connected to a remote database. Same thing here. The dev version will not be connected to the release remote database. You have a separate server where you can experiment all sorts of things. Well, currently, if you want to do that using only Unity, you have to change a lot of parameters in your scripts before each build of your game. And remember not to forget anything or bad things could happen. It's kind of a boring process. Using Advanced Builder, all you have to do is define the different release types, Dev, Beta, and Release. You then press the Generate App Parameters button to update the app parameter script. So you see here in the release type enum that we have our three release types. And back to Unity, we now have an error inside Unity. Because the script we used earlier relied on the enum in app parameters to have a demo field, which it does not have anymore. 
So it's important to always press the Generate Add Parameters button if you've changed something in your configuration because you might have some errors. So in our demo script here, we'll remove everything that is not relevant anymore and I'll show you how easily you can fix the issues that I was talking about earlier. So we'll activate the logs of the game only for the dev and beta version of the game. Then we'll set a different Facebook ID depending on the release type. And we can do the same thing with the URL to the remote database. And done! The final thing I wanted to show you is the custom build section. It allows you to do things before and after each build Advent Builder will create. The only thing you have to do is have a script that implements this interface. The script has to be in an editor folder because it will be used only in the editor and not at runtime. You'll then have two methods to implement on pre-build and on post-build. These methods are called every time a build is made before and after it. So you can do whatever you want here before a build and after a build and using the parameters here, you can see which release type it's building, which platform, which architecture and texture compression. So for example, depending on the release type, you can choose which theme you want to use. Let's say we have the example we used earlier with the demo and full version of your game. You might have different themes, one for the demo version and another or multiple others for the full version of your game. Well, here, you'll just have to check the release type. And if we're building the demo version, you'll change the editor build settings.scenes to have only the demo scene and the same thing for the full version. Depending on the platform, you might want to modify some parameters of your game. So you might have a script here that will open a particular scene, replace a prefab with another, etc. You can really do whatever you want here. Well, I hope this tutorial helped you understand a little bit more about Advanced Builder and what you can do with it. Please contact us if you have any questions or feedback. We'll be happy to help you.